everyone, Dr. Emmy from Pain Free and Fit. Today, a great video for those of you with cervical neck degenerative disc disease. We're going to be talking about the dangers of anterior translation and how to avoid it. Hope you enjoy. So one of the complications of cervical degenerative disc disease, where the discs start to dry out and thin in the neck, is that because of herniations and bulges and the loss of water content in the disc, as the disc loses its vertical height, the ligaments that surround the spine become shorter or slacker. And this leads many times to an instability where the vertebra is allowed to translate or slide forward in relation to the other vertebra. You can feel this in your own neck if you go to the bumps along the back of your neck and as you extend or look up, Normally those bumps should, as you get to a certain height, start to move back into your finger. And if you notice that one moves away from your finger, meaning forward, it indicates that that vertebra may actually have a little bit of a slip, or what we call an anterolisthesis, a forward translation. And that creates a lot of pain because it compresses the back of the disc and it compresses the facet joints in the back of the neck leading to not only neck pain, but can also impinge and irritate nerves that go down to the arm. This many times will occur at an area where you have a horizontal skin crease in the neck. So if you have a friend or yourself in a mirror, take a look at the back of your neck. If you notice a crease that goes crosswise, many times if you put your finger around that crease, that will be the bump or the vertebra that does not move back into your finger the further up you go, but it actually moves forward. So to correct this problem, a very simple exercise you can do is to, as you maintain your finger on that area that has a tendency to slip forward, is to, before you raise your head, to use a little bit of backwards push of that vertebra into your finger. Now it could be very slight, and try to maintain that pressure back into your finger as you slowly lift your head. Only lift it high enough where you can control the backwards push. If you begin to lose that backwards push in your finger and the vertebra starts to move forward, you're not ready for looking up that high yet. If you practice this as a coordination exercise every day, taking three to five seconds to make the movement up as you slowly push back, over time you'll be able to go higher and higher until you can reach full extension looking up 30 degrees backwards to 40 degrees backwards as you maintain that backwards pressure. The more you use this, you can also plug it into activities that involve moving your head forward. Many times when we're working on a computer, reading, looking at our phones, we have a tendency not only for forward head posture, but that vertebra many times starts to move or translate forward. So practicing that backwards pressure as we're reading, as we're working on the phone, as we bend to look down by squatting, is a very important way to plug this in on a daily basis to help avoid this common aggravating problem for cervical degenerative disc disease. If you've enjoyed this video on exercises for cervical degenerative disc disease, subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos to help you. Questions or comments, write in. As always, I'll do my best to answer. And remember, if you're looking for a great program to self-rehab your neck pain, check out our neck healing exercise program available at painfreeandfit.com. I hope this video on cervical degenerative disc disease and avoiding dangerous anterior translatory motions helps you with your chronic neck symptoms.